Welcome back to Gun and Shot TV. This is Chris, and today we're going to be talking about this Daisy rifle. Now, it's kind of interesting. Uh, I've talked about boys' rifles in a couple different videos. I've got a couple different Stevens ones, uh, Stevens Crackshot, a Stevens Springfield uh, Model 15. Um, and I, I really like single shot boys' rifles. I think they're a neat, a neat type of gun. Something that's fun to shoot. Um, it kind of, it's a great way to train new shooters because they have to load each round. And I think it's a great way to go through a brick of ammo and kind of stretch out your time in a range if you have a full day to blow. Uh, I think a single shot's a, a lot of fun to shoot. So a lot of people know that Daisy did make uh, an air gun that was considered a rifle by the ATF. It was, I think, a VL something. And what it did is it had a powder charge. It was a caseless round with a lead bullet and like a compressed powder charge. And it worked just like an air rifle, but the charge of air was so strong, there was so much pressure that it would cause the powder to combust and shoot the bullet out the barrel. Now, Daisy thought that was okay, but apparently the ATF did not. So there was some, some sort of a recall, an agreement not to sell them, something like that. Um, but later on, Daisy did in fact make two different actual 22 long rifle rifles. Um, there was one that's very similar to a cricket. It was just a simple bolt action. And then there was this one. And this is actually called a Legacy by Daisy. Um, it is all plastic. Um, this is, you know, I think this is like a Z-Mac or an aluminum cast zinc um, action. And then it has a metal barrel liner, but the actual outside is all plastic. And it is a takedown. It came with a special tool that would go into this ring, and you could back the barrel out and take it into two pieces. Now, it's not really an effective takedown mechanism, and other than maybe taking it apart for cleaning, I wouldn't recommend it because I could see that getting loose or stripping out the action if you did it an awful lot. It also has some sling swivel mounts, and it has this button in the stock. Now, some people try and turn this. As you can see, this one's all chewed up. But uh, it's actually a push button. And if you push it, the stock will go out and telescope to adjust for different lengths of pull. Now, if you have it out and you turn it, you can pop it out and take the stock apart and get to the screw that holds the stock on the action. But you do not have to turn it to adjust the length of pull. So that's why this one's chewed up, as a previous owner must have been confused about what that did. Now, it does have a red dot on it. And the reason for that is I bought it without the rear sight. It would have had a V-notch sight, like an express rifle sight, um, similar to like a safari gun would have had. But, uh, of course, it was missing. A lot of people took them off and put scopes on these guns and lost the original sight. It's a plastic sight. Uh, it fits on this really narrow notch. I'm hoping that I can find a sight for it. Um, but the story I got, I called all the gunsmiths that Daisy recommends for possibly having parts for these guns. And they all told me that uh, they have not had parts in forever and to com contact Numrich Gun Parts. Um, of course, Numrich lists the parts, but they say they're out of stock. So my chances of finding the rear sight are pretty slim to none, I think, at this point. But for right now, I just got one of these Daisy electronic point sights. I've never actually had one of those. And I figured, uh, in keeping with the quality and the slogan, Take Pride, It's a Daisy, I would put on the cheapest sight I could find. But if anyone does come across one of these uh, stock sites and has a source for one, let me know. I don't even think they're that expensive. They're 10, 15 bucks, but it's just finding one because not many gunsmiths have one. But if, if you run across one, please do send me a message. Um, but it's really simple action. Um, you just have a little ledge you can put a, a round on, close the bolt. Um, that's all there really is to it. Now to take the bolt out, you're going to open the bolt and there's a little button behind the trigger guard. You're going to with the bolt far enough back, push it, and out comes the whole trigger assembly. And it's kind of a, a release for the striker in the bolt. And then the bolt can pull straight out. Um, it's, it's a really basic, cheap mechanism. Um, this one does not appear to have been fired much. It's got some handling, but when I got it and cleaned it, the barrel was absolutely spotless. And it really didn't seem to have a lot of wear, other than the fact that the uh, it's got some dings on it. But I'm thinking those dings were from a... Uh, safe or something like that. You can see too, there's this rectangle here. They made a couple different versions of this gun. They made one with a rotary mag similar to a 1022, and you can see where that would have went in if this were the magazine model. They also made a single shot and a magazine model with actual wood in place of this plastic. 
That one's a little bit rarer because, well, it was wood, it was still a cheap gun. And so if you wanted a decent gun, I would think that you'd go a step above. I have a feeling that the plastic ones probably sold the best just because it was cheap. And I think, you know, it's one of those things kids could probably save up their allowance and actually buy one. Um, from what I can tell, the Daisy Legacy models, uh, this is a 2201. Um, they were only sold from 1988 to 1991 from the sources I've seen. Um, that's probably not definitive. Of course, there's going to be some overlap there. But uh, that's pretty much it. It's just a simple little short, long, long rifle shooting 22 bolt action. I'm going to shoot at some targets here on the range. I, this sight is probably not going to hold zero and not going to be very effective. And it does have a giant dot on it. So it's going to be hard to actually hit very much. But it'll be fun and it'll be some time at the range. See if I can hit my steel spinners here. It's one for one. It's always always a good start. I missed one. There we go. And now the reset. There we go. Seven, eight shots, whatever it was. And now we'll throw a few rounds at that uh, big pumpkin. Probably won't do much because I'm shooting 22 long rifle, but. So there you have it, the Daisy 2201 single shot. Um, not the most refined gun. Uh, definitely not, uh, not not what I would call like an heirloom gun. I have a feeling that this plastic is going to get brittle and fall apart over time. But definitely unique and something you don't see every day. Uh, it had been sitting, this one had been sitting at a pawn shop, or a gun shop by me, for 300 bucks for I think over a year. And one day I walked in and it was 80 bucks. So I jumped on it. Uh, if you could find one for about 100 bucks, especially if it's got the sight, uh, the sight seems to be worth almost as much as the gun. Um, but definitely an interesting piece to add to the collection. It's neat to see stuff like this where it didn't take off, but uh, you can see where they were going with it. But I have a feeling that there were other guns that were, you know, actual guns, actual 22s for not much more money. It's kind of hard to beat the price point, especially when you're competing with used guns. You can walk in a pawn shop and find a single shot 22 for, for peanuts, especially back... 80s to 90s, I imagine they were probably only slightly more expensive than a used gun, and why would you buy the, the plastic new gun when you could get the used gun for cheaper? But uh, I hope you liked learning about this, and I, I kind of made a joke saying take pride to Daisy, but like I said, I, I think it's a neat gun. I kind of went cheap on the site, but uh, hopefully somebody uh, stumbles across one of those rear sights, or maybe one from a Remington 700 I can get set on there and, and, and get back to the actual express site set up. But for Gun and Shot TV, this is Chris. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.